My name's Shannon Yeager. I'm the uh, director of Technium US Incorporated, which is actually a wholly owned subsidiary of uh, Costruzioni Aeronautique Technium, which is the manufacturer of the aircraft. So here at Technium US, we are the outpost here in, in North America for uh, Technium directly. So this is all owned by them. Uh, we do maintain one of every aircraft model. As you can see in the back, we also do all the reassemblies uh, through this location for uh, the Americas as well. The person who might have been looking for a four-place single, this is actually right in the ballpark park of it, a little cheaper than other four place singles, um, but at the same time I'm going to be able to have single engine climb performance and able to go over water or at night over some desolate areas of terrain like West Texas and those kind of things. Uh, it works great in those instances as well. Bottoms roll flat. If it, if it unfortunately had to go down somewhere and the gear could just stay in the well, it's going to be very, very survival aircraft. There is an escape patch on top as well. It's powered by two Rotax engines, and yes, two 100 horsepower Rotax engines can get you a 300 foot per minute climb at 4,500 on one of them. So it is a very, very good aircraft. Safe in terms of the ter uh, in terms of. Uh, getting your instruction out. As an instructor in this one, sitting in the right seat, I can allow my students to have quite a bit of leeway before I really got to take control of the aircraft. So whether it comes from private use, if you're thinking about like a 182, this really is a m very comparable aircraft. It's always built to be on uh, unimproved airstrips as well because, well, let's face it, in Europe they don't really land on pavement very often. Um, it's also something that can be used for uh, flight training. And our third use is we do have this in commercial service in terms of uh, doing geospatial mapping, uh, any other type of uh uh, aerial photography as well as ISR missions as well. So let's talk about the landing gear first. Actually if you were able to come back down and look at the main landing gear, you see their trailing link landing gear with, for the size of the aircraft especially, pretty beefy gas oleo struts. Now this aircraft you know when empty is about 1600 pounds so it's a lot lighter than actually a lot of four place singles but yet it's going to do very well. The clearance issue is not really a problem. We have the beefy landing gear but you'll see that the propellers are way up because it is on a high wing design. So we don't have to worry about rocks and pebbles coming up and hitting us as we go down. Uh, the landing gear door clearance uh, as well as the gear door clearance in the front is also high enough to be into the higher grasses and gravel situations as well. The reason that we chose the Rotax engines are because one, they're very, very efficient and they're very light compared to the horsepower. You can get yourself 100 horsepower at, at hardly any empty weight. Strongly suggest you go and take a look at Rotax on the web. You'll see that they're really incredible little engines. Now, what gives us the advantage is in a flight training scenario, we could realistically burn about eight gallons an hour for the whole aircraft, four gallons an hour per side. And yet, if I do need to climb on a single engine, shut one down for training, I can do that same thing. If I'm using it as a single individual customer, I can still get 142 to 150 knots up at 8,500 while I'm burning about 3.5 to 4 gallons an hour per side as I'm going along. So if you compare that to that four place single, maybe that Cessna 182 you were talking about, quite a bit of difference in the fuel burn and to get the speed that we want as we're going across. So we really have quite a bit of advantages. The, the Rotax is really what makes this possible. Luigi Pascali, who designed this aircraft, also designed the Part Navia P68. And he said to me uh, before he passed away that this is the aircraft he really wanted to design back in 68. The reason that he wasn't able to design a 68 was because the engine to power it wasn't available. When that engine became available, that's why he got on and designed this aircraft. Right now, if you see behind it, we just finished uh, our certification on an 11 seat twin uh, using some different engines so that's been occupying our time for now so at this point the uh, P2006 is available only with the, the Rotax 912 S3. Our LSAs though on the other hand can have one of three engine choices. They can have the 912 ULS engine, the 912 IS Sport, or it can have the uh, 914 ULS 2 are the options you can have in, in all of our aircraft. This really is suited from the owner flown side. This one is suited to that uh, 300 nautical mile per leg mission um, for the person who does want to both travel and or needs to go across some water or needs to fly at night across some desolate terrain. I know people think that Florida has got lots of people like Miami does, but if you fly across the middle of the state at night, it can get a little interesting. There's not a lot of lights out there. The same way you get out in West Texas. Or if I was over in Wisconsin, I need to get back to Gary, Indiana, or I needed to get over to um, uh, Michigan and I wanted to fly across that little lake, not probably going to do that in a single engine aircraft. This one gives me the flexibility at the costs 
less than a single engine aircraft that's comparable in speed and allows me to get there. So this mission is about a 300 nautical mile legs. It can do 500 nautical miles, but the comfort zone for most people is about 350 nautical miles per leg and a very efficient because get this, if you use unleaded fuel in this, which you can use, you can also use low lead, you can use any combination, but if you can use 70% of the time or more, you can use the unleaded fuel, this thing will go 100 hours before any maintenance is required on it, which really will help the dispatch rate, which takes me into if I wanted to use this for a flight school. If you could name for me another trainer that has two engines on it for multi-engine train that's gonna burn eight gallons an hour for the whole aircraft, I'm going to laugh at you because there's no such thing. A DA-42 comes kind of close, but remember too, if I get this with the unleaded fuel in it, uh, I'm gonna be able to go 100 hours on dispatch, which for a flight school means that they're gonna be able to put that out and put that out and put that out, as opposed to always having to come back at 50 hours for a little bit to get the oil change and those kind of things. So we have some definite efficiencies um, with the aircraft in flight. Also, it's a very smooth transition for these aircraft. Even if you are training in a 150 or a 172 prior to coming to this aircraft, the sight pictures and speeds are identical. I'm gonna run this in the pattern. I'm gonna be doing 90, 80, 70. So 90 in the downwind, 80 in the uh, base, and 70 on final, which is the same thing you're gonna find for most people doing in their 172s. If you move up through our progression line, like through our P2008, to our P2010, to our P2006, that's going from a two-place LSA to a four-place standard category to a four-place twin, you're gonna again see the sight pictures and all are identical. So their movement between these aircraft, as they add more complexities, are just adding some complexities, not the additional part of really trying to figure out a whole brand new aircraft. And this one, the flight training community, has another neat little piece. We've made it so that all the important V speeds of this aircraft are all 122 knots. VLO, VLE, VA, emergency gear extension, they're all 122 knots. So benefit for your students, you know that the examiner is going to ask all about that aircraft. I have less to learn. Which means that we all know that in the multi-engine for the multi-commercial, they're gonna be in that aircraft five to seven hours maximum, really is what they're gonna be in that aircraft for. Why do they really need to go through and learn something that's totally off the wall they're never gonna see again? Let's make it as easy as we can. Let's get into the training in an aircraft that meets their specification for the future. Also, obviously qualifying with the G1000 NXI as a TAA aircraft, as does our four-place single two. So in, in terms of this aircraft right here, your useful load is going to be somewhere, depending on the equipment that you select on the aircraft, it's going to be somewhere between 850 and 990 pounds. So you've got you know, just under 1,000 pounds is what you're going to get there. In terms of cost for this aircraft, it's going to be between about 575,000 for the analog version of this that will come with a GTN 650. It does not have a vacuum system, so they're all electric gyros. And then the next step is the G1000 NXI, and that's going to uh, range, it's going to start uh, just under 600 at 599. They're going to add on things like autopilot and those kind of things. Most people get out on a private buy, they get out at about 625 or 630. The maximum you can do to kind of load her on up is about 650.